Roots of the Science podcast with your girl and with an E. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 72 of the Root of the Science podcast with your girl and with an E. If you are new here, welcome, welcome. It's always good to have new people. Make sure that you follow us on the various social media platforms, on Facebook, on Twitter and Instagram. Also make sure that you like and subscribe and leave a review. Our loyal listeners who always keep on coming back, thank you so much. It's always good to have you here. Now, for the past few weeks, I've had the pleasure of chatting with young Africans in STEM who've shared their stories about their journey into science as part of the You Are a Scientist interviews. The purpose is to amplify the voices of young Africans in STEM and remind them that they are an inspiration to many. This week, we are wrapping up and I'll be joined by three young scientists who share their unique experiences. Today you'll hear from Tanatswa, Avela and Lengiwe. Let's go. My first guest is Tanatswa Mucharihondo, a Zimbabwean aeronautical engineering student. In this episode, we learn that Tanatswa has always excelled in physics and mathematics. Because of his older brother, he has always known that he wanted to be an engineer, specifically in aviation. Tanata passed his A-levels with flying colors and he was able to pursue his dream and study the Beijing University of Aeronautics and Aerospace Engineering. He describes what aeronautical engineers do and you also hear how impressive his future goals are. Let's take a listen. Hi Tanatwa, welcome to the show. Hi Anne, thank you for having me. Oh yeah, no, definitely. It's so lovely having you. I'm really excited to hear all about you and everything that you do. So first things first, let's get the introductions out of the way. Who is Tanatwa? Where are you from? Where are you currently based? And what are you currently doing? Okay, so my full name is Tanatwa Endim Chirahondo and I'm 21 years old. Actually, I'm turning 21 years soon and I am from Zimbabwe. But right now I'm studying my undergrad degree in China, in Beijing, China, and I'm pursuing aeronautical engineering. Oh, fantastic. Wow. So from Zimbabwe to Beijing. Damn, what a story. <laughs> okay, so before we get into all of that and how that happened, I think then it's important for us to set the scene, right? I want to know, how does young Tanatswa get into science? Um, was it something that you're always passionate about? Did you watch things on TV? Or like, were there people who inspired you? Or is it one of those things where you're like, ah, okay, I'm here, I'm doing science. And yeah, so what's your story? Okay, so growing up, I've always been fascinated by science and I've always been like really smart in in scientific languages like mathematics. So when I was young, I grew up with my mom and my older brother. So when I was young, my brother wanted to be an engineer and that word engineer, it just fascinated me a lot that even when I didn't know what it was, I always be like, when I grow up, I want to be an engineer. I want to be an engineer saying the same thing. (laughs) Then um, that was when I was way, way younger, like in primary school. And then I started my high school at a school called St. Faith's High School in Zimbabwe. And the first and second year, it's just um, normal science. It's not really, you know, it's not really like deep physics, but I I was always interested Mm -hmm. throughout. So by the time I reached um, the period where we get to study physics, I found myself that it was coming easy for me. Um, maybe it's what those, what people say, you know, like uh, when passion, when you have the passion, it will come easy for you. I think it was something like that. So Mm. because I was very much interested in physics and mathematics, it was just always easy for me that I actually even dropped biology and chemistry. I didn't even take them for all level. I actually removed them. And um, my, my high school had high standards so in order for me to continue a level at that school i had to write at least 12 subjects for all level and sure. and so and so because i had removed chemistry and and biology it means i was running short on subjects 
So mm. I picked up other subjects like just so that my classes are enough. So I picked up um, accounting and business studies on top of my other subjects. And I was also doing engineering drawing at all level. And um, I passed my all level with very high, with flying colors. Yeah, I, I think I did pretty mm. well for my all level. And uh, yeah. Since I already knew what I was going to do for A level, I was already going to do three subjects, mathematics, physics, and engineering drawing. I already had it on my mind since the very beginning. I knew it was what I was going to do for advanced level. And um, at that moment, I didn't really know which kind of engineering I wanted to do, but I was just always fascinated with planes, you know, growing up. But I wasn't really sure which um, engineering course I was going to take afterwards, but I'm pretty sure it was something in aviation that, that I knew. And so during my long holiday, um, that's when I began to decide and apply to colleges. So I applied to the University of Zimbabwe. I also applied to Vitz University in South Africa. And I applied to some universities in Australia and some universities here in Beijing. So I initially, I actually wanted to go to Australia, but the university in Australia, they didn't give me a scholarship and their tuition was too, was a lot. Oh, and I actually had um, 20 points for A level, like four A's, four A's for A level. So I, mm. I really thought mm. it would be easy wow. for me to get a scholarship from the beginning but then things changed because their standards in Australia they are also different like they don't recognize um, the the Zimbabwean uh, examination board so they were telling me if you want oh. the school they actually gave me a place but they said for the scholarship if you want it you have to re- rewrite Cambridge exams or some other form of exams that they recognize at their universities. And so I just thought, ah, this is a long process, you know, because after finishing high school, you'll be like, now I want to rest. And they were telling me to, to, mm. to start studying again so that I can redo my A-level. I was like, no, I will just find a place somewhere else. And then I began to apply in, in Beijing, in China initially. And then I got a place in Beijing and I got a place at a dream university. My university is called Beijing University of Aeronautics and Astronautics. And it's like, wow. it's like number one university in the aviation industry in China. And so like a dream university for me. So when they told me I got a place, I got really excited. And then, yeah, that's when I came here. And right now, right now, I haven't really, um, how do I say this? I haven't really gotten deep into my major, into aeronautical engineering, because up to now, up to the end of second year, I'm in second year right now. Up to the end of second year, we are studying the same things as mechanical students. So we are in the same class as mechanical students. Mm. And then in third and fourth year, that's when I'll dig deeper into my my passion, which is aeronautical engineering. Yo, wow. What a story. What a story. So many points for us to touch on. Um So, yeah, like you said, that you are pretty uh, smart. I mean, that's coming, you know, it's actually congratulations, Mm -hmm. first of all, for getting these scholarships and working really hard to get these places. So I'm just curious, you know, for most students, um, the, the, the decision of wanting to study, how were you exposed to these different universities? Not many students, um, know that you know you can study abroad and there are all these amazing universities all over the world but it seems like to you you already had an idea so how were you how were you like okay these are the type of places that I want to apply how did you make that decision okay so my long holiday um I was at home for almost eight months after I finished oh okay yeah and one thing I didn't mention there was like some kind of tragic that happened to me when I was in in lower six and so I almost when I was in lower six I almost gave up on school you know because I was like ah this is so I was kind of depressed 
at that moment mm. or oh, I was no longer interested in my major but then um I later found back my fire just before the exams like I was later motivated just before my exams my 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 A level exams and so after I wrote my A level exams Um, I got an opportunity of people who were willing to to pay for my tuition in any university that I uh, I wanted in any university that I wanted, but they gave me a price range because uh, in Aust- since I wanted Australia, Australia the universities there they are about sixty thousand dollars per year, so they told me sure. we can do something that's less than ten thousand a year. So mm. in in that long holiday I got down I started to research like top universities that are cheap and uh, that are affordable so in that process that's when I started to find out all these universities and all these mm. places yeah and actually before I finally got the place at my current university I even applied to other universities here in China but I oh. I always knew what I wanted to do and so Of course I didn't decide on my own I had to ask from family and friends to help me with mm. these with these decisions you know and uh at that time it just all came together and when I applied I was actually happy that they gave me the place to this particular university because it's the one I wow. really wanted in China yeah mm, Wow what a story that's mm-hmm. that's really amazing that um you you were able to find your fire like you said and um ultimately mm-hmm. all things worked in your favor mm-hmm. and i like how you took that initiative to not just sit on your hands and be like okay i'll just take whatever university my funders say i should go to but you were like let me research let me find out what's what's there and oh, yeah. uh, from there you're able to expose yourself which is really really good because sometimes you just sit on your hands and you just expect things to happen so yeah the, part of me this is just yeah. a clear example of just you if you know what you want you go for it right that's right yeah that's right okay, okay cool so tanatwa you said that you have you are now in your second year yes. of your aeronautical engineering degree in this really amazing university in china so now okay let's say somebody's listening and is like what on earth is aeronautical engineering we know the word engineering okay. but what is this aeronautical <laughs> part yeah. i know you said that you only do it in third year you'll get more specialized but for somebody who doesn't know give us an overview what is it all about and why are you so passionate about getting into the space okay so aeronautical engineering it's basically in an airplane engineer and he's like a specialized airplane engineer because they go deeper airplane engineers they are just um they only do the surface when it comes to aviation industry and engineering in that industry but uh, the aeronautical engineers they are the ones who go beyond like designing and um fewer few um the parts like fewer on an airplane so these are the engineers who be brainstorming on let's say new ideas for example let's say uh you know when when an airplane crashes right um these mm-hmm. these aeronautical engineers they are the ones who come up with better ideas to avoid such things so to ultimately to be about specializing in future like uh, what what will i be doing will i be focusing on the engine of an airplane will i be focusing on the body will i be focusing on the oh. well etc but at the moment it's just basic at the moment i'm studying like sort of like that's why i'm even joining mechanical engineering students because mm. with mechanical engineering students they can even if they want they can even join aeronautical engineering later but at the moment we we can still even let's say even if i want to change at the moment and let's say i lose interest in aviation and i and i'm now interested in cars or something that's related to engineering at the moment i can still change but if i continue uh, in this path it means i will work strongly in the in in the airplane industry. Oh okay. Yeah. Um I just wanted to check. You said it's aviation. Could this also kind of branch into for example spaceships like you know could that is that also in the same field or is that another whole different part of engineering? Oh it's another different part of engineering. Like like I said my university is called Beijing University of 
aeronautical and astronautical engineering. Oh, so aeronautical, so yeah, aeronautical, it's like planes on this surface or on the earth. And then mm-hmm. astronautical, it's planes that will go in space. Oh, say so I thought maybe one day we'll be hearing you designing another SpaceX um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> type of plane. And, uh, <laughs> If, if I was really interested in astronautical engineering, actually, if if maybe I think of changing at the moment, I'm still at, in that course. I haven't deviated that much, but I'm pretty sure I'll stay in aeronautical engineering. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, you know, they are building planes to send people to out of space. So who knows? <laughs> one day, one day. Sorry. And all these like aeronautical engineering and um astronautical engineer we are all regarded as aerospace engineering in engineers and aerospace engineering or under aerospace engineering. oh so the umbrella is aerospace engineering and then you you deviate in um, aeronautical yes. and astronomical astronautical <laughs> astronautical engineering okay that's so interesting yeah, i've learned a lot you see i even learn in these uh, sessions so thank you for teaching us and hopefully everybody else who's listening something new um before we get into your future and whatnot i just would love to hear your experience on a on a more personal note i mean you've moved i said to you earlier you went from zimbabwe to china so you're now obviously living in a different um environment culturally you know language wise and whatnot and also you're away from family etc how has that experience been for you have you adapted or uh, and if you have was it easy or was it hard okay so i think i have adapted enough but the journey was not easy because to my disadvantage when i came to china i came to china in september 2019 I was only here for about three Mm. or four months and that's when the COVID started. So yeah, so it was it was a bit difficult in terms of adapting, but then we came through our university, they actually helped us a lot during those times. Like and one advantage is my university is close to like Beijing Capital International Airport. So for our major, we are always they, they always help us like going there sometimes, you know, to research and things like that and going to the labs and et cetera, et cetera. So it has been hard to adapt, but then I think we came through after all. So then this brings me to my next question then. What is, what, where do you aspire to be? Like, you know, I know it's still the very beginning of your educational career and also your, um, your career in general, but where, where do you see yourself? What's the dream? What's the goal? Because I'm sure you've thought about it. Yeah, so I aspire to be in Australia mm-hmm. or either I will be in Australia or in Europe. That's where my dreams have always been. And I'm actually really lucky because my university is an exchange student program. In, it starts in third year. So in third year, if I want to apply for it, I can exchange. And at the moment, they actually wow. told me I'm eligible to apply for that. So uh, the schools the schools that they can exchange okay. with, they are in Italy and France only. So <laughs> so it was a bit of a bummer knowing uh, they don't yeah. have an exchange program in Australia. But nonetheless... <laughs> Nonetheless, it will be okay. And I'm planning that if I get it, hopefully I'll get it. Mm. And if I get it, I can make even further connections in Italy, in Europe, and and things like that, yeah. But then there's another point of this COVID because last year students, they didn't go for that exchange program because of COVID. So I'm I'm afraid it might it might um it might be a problem for for this year students as well for next year students like that year. How long is the exchange program for? It's one semester for four months. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No. Well, I hope COVID restrictions allowing you get to, you know, that this talk like, oh, after COVID or hopefully yeah. maybe now the countries yeah. are opening up slowly but surely with all of these vaccines. So I'm crossing fingers for you that you get to um, 
you get to realize this goal and get into these new places. Um, and Tanatwa, it gets me so excited because I love how you think it's you think big and you just um, you've got a very world vision yeah. that you you are not you do not limit yourself in terms of where you want to be and where you want to go. And it's so refreshing to hear that from such a young person. So I can only imagine, you know give you 10 years or even five years where you will be. Like I said, my fire just uh, came back before the exams. There was a time when I almost gave up everything, but I'm actually happy that I'm now more interested in science again in, in my degree. So yeah. That's one thing. For my last question, we are you, you said that you, you have this passion and whatnot. So what would you say to somebody who is inspired by you? Because, I mean, you are inspiring. There's so many people who look up to you. Even the people who told me to connect with you were like, you know, you got to speak to this guy. He's really brilliant. So for somebody who's listening and they're younger than you or even somebody like myself, I'm inspired. Um, what would you say? What are some of your words of wisdom? wisdom that you would like to just leave for us before we wrap up today um i would want to say if you are interested in something just don't give up just continue pursuing it and uh, um what will follow will just come easy for you most of the times and don't try to force yourself into things you should put effort of course but um if it's not working mm. and then it's not working yeah don't strain your yourself that much and you should also pray a lot thank you for that and thank you for sharing your story i am ah oh, it, it made me realize why doing this is so important because there's so many amazing young africans in stem who are doing really yeah. amazing things and you are one of them so thank you for coming on and chatting with me today i really appreciate it okay thank you so much for having me it's fun to talk about these things yeah for sure and second we have Avela Olu from South Africa. He's a third-year environmental science student at the University of Kozula Natal. He tells us that he was initially interested in pursuing a health science degree, but that did not go as planned. Alternatively, Avela was offered and enrolled in a course in environmental sciences. Avela admits that the first year was difficult, but in the second year, that's when the puzzle pieces fell into place and he realized which path was best for him. He explains what environmental science is and also his talks us through his future aspirations, which include pursuing an honors degree. Plus, Avela gives a great shout out at the end. So you better take a listen. Hi, Avela. Welcome to the show. Hi, and thanks for having me. Uh, I'm so excited to be here and thanks for hosting me. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. I'm so excited to have you on and for everybody else to get to know more about you and everything that you do. So first things first, let's get this ball rolling. Give me a brief introduction. Um, so who's Avela? Where are you currently based? What are you currently doing? Um, uh, Avela is a third year student at the University of KwaZulu Natal. Uh, in Peter Maritzburg campus. Uh, he's doing uh, environmental science and, and he's single. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for all the ladies out there, you know, please, he, he's letting you know. Oh, wait, that's an assumption. Um, <laughs> yeah, so the ladies, hit him up, hit him up. His uh, details will be below okay <laughs> that's an awesome introduction okay so Avela uh before we get into everything that you do and your singleness etc we're here because you you're doing an environmental science degree right so before you were this person doing the science degree I think it's always important us to find out the root of your science right so what what was what happened uh was it somebody who inspired you or was it one of those things that you just kind of happened and you're like, oh, here I am. So what's your story? Uh, for me, uh, I can't say that I was, science was like my interest, like, but I did want to do uh, science, but I was more in like into health, health mm. science. But then, but okay. then that didn't happen. And then I got an offer at PMP to come here and study um, environmental science. And uh, in my first year, I didn't, 
like understand some of the things, you know, because everything was new and trying to like balance everything. Mm. Uh, but as I was doing my second year, I think I, I got a glimpse of which route was more suited for me to like pick upon, you know. Oh, okay. So you said that you initially um, you didn't want to do this. You said you wanted to do health sciences. So which particular field was it? The typical I want to be a doctor story, or was it another type of health sciences that you wanted to be in? Hell no, hell no, not a doctor. <laughs> I wanted to do. Um, <laughs> I wanted to do pharmacy uh, or be a, a dental a dental doctor. Or, or be a dietitian. Oh, okay. Cool, cool. All right. So um, you kind of, life happens and then you deviated to environmental sciences, right? Yeah. Uh, so with, with, when, when that happened, like you said, it was something new and you're like, oh. Uh, and I think in, in first year, it gets a little bit confusing because you do all of those very basic modules that... You know, not a lot of like it doesn't really have any direction. You're just doing things like generally, like basic, basic. How was that for you? Uh, for me, it was it was it was challenging. I won't lie. Uh, considering mm. this new environment that I'm in, I've never been like exposed to it, uh, and I, I ended up not uh, doing well in some of my modules. Ended up like failing and stuff, and. Mm. And but then, uh, as 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 I progressed with with time, I was able to do okay and like uh, and just like navigate my way throughout. No, I appreciate your honesty. I think that's a lot of things that people don't talk about that, you know, first year is different. <laughs> you know, it's different than coming from high school. And many of us, including myself, I failed stats. Uh, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> So many of us have our moments where you fail, but in that moment, it feels like it's horrible. But I think it's good that these are the things that kind of happen and you fail and you learn and you try again. Um, and here you are, third year. Congratulations. That means you are you are in the year where you're about to graduate now. Hey, this is your last um your last year before you graduate. Yeah, I'm excited and just ready to get it over and done. Yeah. Yeah, no, I I can I can understand. So um before we talk about what you plan to do after your third year, I think it's important for us to understand for somebody who's never heard of environmental sciences, uh you know, can you just give us an explanation of what you've been doing these past three years? What is this whole environmental science is all about? How do you understand what you've been doing? Okay, um, environmental science um, you mainly uh, major in biology and environmental environmental system which is ENV so there um, you are just about more on the conservation of species, of threatened species, endangered species and trying to like um, map out places and like check the distribution of species across the, 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 the geographical range, where are they more thriving, where are they are less thriving, where are they less thriving, and what is the cause of that, and what can we do as scientists like better improve and, and stabilize the ecosystem so that we cannot, we do not lose these species. Mm, that's so interesting. That's so interesting. So um, you guys are really into like species protection and whatnot. Um, so I, I would have thought when I thought environmental science, I would have thought it's like climate, what, what, <laughs> climate change. <laughs> yeah, there, there is, there is something. Oh, okay. When you, yeah, it's, it's just amalgamated things. 
So I, I, I'm mainly focused on like on conservation of species. Oh, that's quite interesting. That's quite interesting. So now, when you finally finish this degree and you get graduate and you graduate, because you will, because it's going to end in congratulations just now. Amen. Um, <laughs> so, what's the plan? Uh, do you see yourself continuing with this school thing, or do you want to try something different? Um, where yeah, to- I, I do want to continue and do my honors and like in and, and, and GIS trying there I will be looking at um, mapping out the species that are endangered mapping mapping the species ma- mapping maybe like invasive species and trying to like mm-hmm. regulate those type of species in, in, in terms of like maybe we remove them or are they really helping our systems and everything so that we could just regulate them in a way so that they, they do not like outcompete our nature plants oh okay that's great okay so we mentioned a term here that some people might not know gis what is gis oh well gis is geographic information system um mainly uh it's just like uh it involves a lot of map work and trying to like locate um objects using sensors uh, and using coordinates yeah but mainly it's just map maps and trying to like uh calculate doing buffers around places mm. you know no thank you for that i think some to to you and i um that might be like something that we know but i know for other people who are listening that's something completely different that's really really cool and it sounds exciting so that's where you kind of want to venture into um you want to leave the life science aspect of it a little bit alone for now hey yeah yeah <laughs> All right, that's great. Okay, so um, Abel, it's been really interesting hearing you speak about this science, the science degree. And, um, you know, the main reason why I have you here is because obviously I want to celebrate you and to say that, hey, well done, you're doing some really amazing things and you are an inspiration to people. I hope you realize that people are like, oh my goodness, I want to be like you. Do you feel like you're an inspiration? or is it something that you're like ah no not me it's it's something that i would say it's not me but to my brother i know that i am an inspiration to my mother i know that i'm an inspiration i might also Uh, have influence to other people but which they which they haven't maybe came and like confessed it to me Mm. Mm. Yeah. No, that's true. That's true. I think sometimes we kind of minimize our own greatness because when we look at others, we, we tend to compare and we're like, oh no, only at this specific level would I be considered inspir- an inspiration. But I think right now, right where you are and the fact that you've got this positive attitude and you're honest and you're like, hey, it's tough. It was tough, but I'm still doing <laughs> it. So I really, yeah. I really appreciate, I really appreciate that type of energy that you're giving it's very refreshing and for somebody who is inspired by you or people who who are like wow this guy's pretty cool i want to be like him one day what is the one piece of advice that you would give them about pursuing science or just in general oh, life okay um for me mm-hmm. i'm men of faith you know faith is what has helped me to like stay anchored in what i do um and i believe that all things are possible for he who, mm. for he who believes so when you believe about when you believe in something it will it will happen and firstly as a person you have to find what you love or find what what you want to do and then when you found that you should um speak that into existence and pray about it and and God will direct you and you will direct your, 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 your footsteps and everything. And also, you shouldn't forget that it comes with a great sacrifice. Mm, mm. Wow, that's, that's, that's very true. That's very true. And thank you for that piece of advice. I think sometimes people tend to forget that for you to be wherever you might be, you have to kind of give up some things. You kind of have to give up going out with your friends, kind of have to give up, you know, those nice yes. times or, you know, those things. <laughs> 
<laughs> those <laughs> things that varsity is all about uh, for you to get to where you are and to have that belief, that dream. Um, that's also very, very important. And it's really great that you have your faith that's grounding you and that kind of anchors you and reminds you of why you're doing what you're doing. So um, as we wrap up, I know before I say goodbye, you're like, yo, Anne, can I do a shout out? So please, (laughs) please, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm so humbled. Uh, I'd like to shout out to my mom, my brother, my sister, Ri, my sister, Bo, uh, uh, Sne and Snako, and everyone else who knows me. Uh, amazing. Hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, shout out to the people who are the support system of you. And thank you so much, Avila. I had so much fun chatting with you um, and for us to get to know more about you. Just a reminder to all of the ladies out there, he said he was single in the beginning, just in case okay <laughs> just in case they forgot so yeah thank you so much i had so much fun chatting with you cheers it's been an honor finally i have Shingu Amiani from south africa she's also a third year student pursuing but she is pursuing a medical degree at the university of kwazulu natal she says that since grade 10 she has always known she wanted to pursue a career in science but was a bit unsure sure in which particular field. However, when her mother became ill, her desire to pursue a career in medicine was sparked. Klingiwe discusses her difficulties adjusting to university life, as well as her own mental issues, which she opens up so candidly for us. We also talk about how the pandemic has affected her studies. And finally, we talk about her future plans in the field of medicine. Let's take a listen to this and so much more. Hi, Shengiwe. Welcome to the show. Hi, and thank you so much for having me. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on the show today. And, you know, let's get the ball rolling. I'd love to hear a brief introduction from yourself. So who is Shengiwe? What are you currently doing? And where are you based? Just in brief. Um, my name is Shengiwe Mieni. Originally, I'm from a small town called Ntuba Tuba. It's in the northern part of KZN. Um, that's where I grew up with my family, a last born of three siblings. Um, and right now I'm currently a medical student, a third year medical student, actually, at the University of Guadalupe Natal, uh, Nelson Armandela School of Medicine campus. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. So before we get into all that you do in terms of medicine. You mentioned that you are the last born of three. So I want us to go to the very, very, very beginning to find out your story. How does Klingue get into um, into medicine This from this little small town? How, where did this dream of being a doctor come in? Was it something that you always knew that this is what you wanted to do? Or was it one of those things that kind of just happened and you just rolled with it? What's your story? Well, I wouldn't really say it was always there. Okay, it was always there, but I just didn't realize that the passion was there. So um, growing mm. up being the last born, unfortunately, I lost my dad to diabetes in 2006. I was five at that time. Um, as I mentioned, he was diabetic. And then in 2017, I think, I think 2017, um, my mother had, had a mental illness. So now at that time, my other siblings, we were already not living at home. One of them was already at school. Another one was already working. So it was just me and her alone at home. And then that's where I had to live with a person who has a mental illness at the same time, whose health is a bit compromised. So now having to juggle schoolwork, mm-hmm. taking care of the house, because he's not capable of doing that, and actually taking care of mm-hmm. her. So it, it was like I was being a parent to my parent. See? So I mm-hmm. guess that's where mm-hmm. this whole thing started. It started, I wouldn't say I really knew exactly what I wanted to do, but I knew that when I get to grade 10, I'm going to choose science mm-hmm. as my mainstream. But I wasn't really sure what to do. And then when 
my mother started falling ill. I think that's where the passion started to kick in. But I didn't mm. notice. I remember when I was in grade 12, we were asked to do a prepared speech of any topic of your choice. I don't even know what happened, but I found myself doing a prepared speech about the shortage of cardiologists in South Africa. I don't even know where that wow. came from. I, I don't know even now. I feel like the passion mm. has always been there, but it's just that I wasn't paying attention to it. It sounds like um, it's always been, like you said, at a very subconscious level. Mm. And I think many of us, um, uh, I'm sorry with what happened to your dad, first of all, and Thank your mom. You. That's okay. I think seeing, seeing these things firsthand, you start to realize that, hey, this is something that I'd like to I'd like to do and sometimes you don't need the tv to show you but real life mm. shows you that there's something that you can do and um and it's it's weird how the mind works the mind is tricky like that it it's, is it's it crazy is. how that <laughs> it's crazy how that happens or even i don't know um you know some people can say it was part of you know god's plan or the universe it, or whatever higher power you believe in crazy direct like me to you. the right place yeah we are needed to be. yeah <laughs> Precisely. So precisely. So that's how I think sometimes these things are unexplainable. And it's quite interesting that you have the story. Okay, so you said um, in grade 10, you knew this is you're going to take sciences, right? Mm. Matric, you do this speech and you're like, okay, uh, shortage of cardiologists. Okay, then take us through now. These things are going on subconsciously. Um, how does that process into um, getting into getting into medical school? Because hey, that that is not easy. That's, <laughs> first that's, of all, it wasn't easy. <laughs> that's not easy. So how does that happen? And then kind of take us through into how you are now up into your third year journey. So how was that journey for you? Okay, so. Um, with God praying every day, um, I managed to pass well. I managed to do well in my grade 12 results. And then I got accepted to, like, let me tell you, I, I knew that medical school is where I'm going. I, I knew medical school is my destination. Dark or blue, medical school, I'm there, you know. <laughs> so in, in, in all the universities that I applied on, medical school was my first choice. And um, I got accepted at UKZN Medical School, um, yeah, where I'm currently studying. So my first year, my first year was a mess. I'm, I'm not even going to lie. My first year was a lot. Yeah. Being, yeah. Living, living your home and your parents not knowing where you're going, that was something yeah. that hit that that was just too much. It was it was a lot because I told you he had a men she had a, a mental illness story. So now that means she was not processing things as how we are processing things. So she didn't know where I was going. I told her that okay, I'm leaving now. I'm going to school. She didn't understand what I was saying. So when I got here, uh, seeing people with their parents, nice things, nice vibes, rejoicing. It kind of hit me that, okay, this is the experience that I never got to experience. This is something that I never got to experience. And on top of that, my mental health was just taking another troll, heading straight to, south, to the south. It was just a lot. Mm -hmm. Having to deal with mm -hmm. my transitioning from high school to university at the same time, there is this happening at home. It was too much. Um, yeah, it was a lot. And I'm actually glad that I can actually talk about this now without crying. Because I remember back then, when you asked me mm -hmm. about these things, I would not be able to last even five minutes in that conversation without bursting into wow. tears. Because it was, it was too much. And I guess mm -hmm. I, I've, when I got to second year, that's when I decided that, you know what, this is happening you can't change it. Mm -hmm. You just need to change yourself and see what you need to do with it. You're not going to always get what you want. Sometimes you get what you need and not what you want. Getting into medical mm -hmm. food is what I needed. 
I guess I've always wanted that fantasy of, okay, I'm in medical school, parents calling me every day, checking me how I'm doing, yeah. you know, all of that. I never got to experience that. It's what I wanted, but I didn't get it. But hey, it made me a better person. It made me who I am today, I guess. So it means um, the way it is. I should not try by all means to change anything on it. It's fine. This is this is the reality. So let me just leave on the reality and stop thinking about what if this doesn't happen? What if my dad was still alive? What if this and that? It, it's okay, you see. And I guess lockdown helped me a lot into realizing mm-hmm. all these things. Um, that's when I decided that, you know what, sis, work on your mental health. You cannot be treating people when you yourself, you're not even healed. You're fighting your mm-hmm. own inner battles, but you're expecting to heal other people. How? So I decided mm-hmm. that let me just work on myself. Um, now I am, I wouldn't say I'm the most happiest person on earth. I'll be lying if I'm saying that. I'm not. But I guess I'm the better version of myself compared to what I was two years ago. Yeah. Mm. Sure. Thank you. Wow. First of all, thank you so much for being so open and honest. You know, on the topics of mental health, Mm. um, it's not something that many people like to talk about. And and I think, especially like you mentioned, that transition from... From, from high school to varsity, it's wild. It's wild. And like you said, for you coming away, like we all have this perfect idea. We watch movies about how... Um, how how university is meant to be and your parents are dropping you off and for some people that's not a reality and you know for you like you mentioned that 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 is not a reality and the fact that you are able to be so acutely aware of of this and to kind of realize that hey this is something that I don't have but maybe I can overcome this I commend you for that and I just Thank you so much for sharing that and for sharing your journey with us. And also, most importantly, um, you mentioned about lockdown, um, about how I think for a lot of people, because of lockdown, people had to really sit with themselves and face these demons, as you called it. That's true. You know, um, and I am happy to hear that for you, you made some progress. And although you, you acknowledge that you're not the happiest person ever but the fact that you're able to be so acutely aware of your feelings and your emotions and all of that so wow thank you 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 gave me goosebumps I'm always like a bit emotional right now but yeah so thank you so much for for sharing that and um for sharing your journey with us I think it just it it just shows how important it is to have these conversations and to be open and honest and that even at at undergraduate level like there are people who are going through the most but they just don't know how to communicate it Mm -hmm. how has the pandemic affected um, your studies especially for students in the medical field I know you guys have to do some practicals and whatnot how has that shift Uh been uh, for you personally or as a whole in terms of your experience as a medical su- medical student on the medical okay on the medical side it has taken a toll on us there are a lot of things that we're not able to do as you know we have practical we have hospital right now i'm supposed to be going to hospital but i can't we're learning things that we're supposed to be seeing in person but we're doing mm. it online a lot of things yes. are just not making sense and we all have those moments where you sit down with yourself and be like, how are you going to treat patients when you are learning in your room, when you're supposed to be there, seeing these things in person, practicing these skills in person? Mm. It, 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 it has been a lot. It has been too much. But I also understand how you said in terms of academically speaking and how it's going to affect you guys in the future and the type of medicine that you guys are going to be able to conduct. Um, 
that's also obviously it, it's obvious but we hope that sooner rather than later you find a way to catch up and you can get to those needed skills and speaking of skills and you know you being a doctor I think I'm assuming rather that with most students who get into medicine um I know you do this for six, seven years, but you've got an ideal field. You've got an aspirations for the future of where you want to be. So for you, I'm interested to know, what are your future aspirations? Do you have a specific, do you want to specialize in something or like, or do you want to continue studying afterwards? Like I know people do that as well. So where, where would your trajectory be Um when everything is kind of normal in an idealistic world? Um, one thing I can tell you about the medical field is that um, the journey never ends. You would think that you were done and then you realize that actually, no, this is, this is just the beginning. The journey just keeps on going and going. Um, as, as I told you that I did this, speech in high school about cardiologists and at first I was a bit in I was a bit in denial that do I do you really want to be a cardiologist one day or are you just doing this because you I don't know you good at talking or something but then I realized that I had this passion I had this passion when we got to learn uh, about the heart last year it was just it was so much passion that I can't even explain myself so far, that was one of the most amazing things I've learned. I'm not saying that I'm being picky or choosy, but if I really have to be honest, that was one of the exciting things I learned so far in medical school. But then I don't want to limit myself and say I'm, I want to be a cardiologist one day because I haven't, as I said, I'm in third year. I'm, I haven't started... Um, clinical medicine. So clinical medicine is where you're doing different blocks like OBGYN, uh, trauma, emergency medicine, internal medicine. So that's when I would get to see that, okay, if you're here, this is what you do. If you're here, this is what you do. So I'm keeping my my options open. So I don't want to limit my options and say, I want to do this, mm-hmm. but I just want to have a broad mind and be like, mm. if you find obstetrics and gynecology exciting, then I'll go with it. If I find trauma exciting, then I'll go with it. So that's why I'm saying I don't want to limit my options at the moment. But studying further um, post my medical degree, that is something I am highly recommend- reconsidering. Sorry. Okay. Mm. Okay. That's that's so interesting. I love how you said that you you're keeping the book wide open, yes. although you have this interest. But you're absolutely right. Doing something in theory and in practice are two completely different that's things. True. <laughs> true. So until you get to 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 dabble in all of these fields, at least you'll know. Like ah, I'll never do X. But I would definitely might consider X and Y, I mean, or Z and Y or whatever. So um, I hope, and I think that's a beautiful part about medicine and especially at the stage that you're in, you're able to embrace all of these fields, the good and the bad of it, <laughs> you know, with like with anything. So um, I, when you, as you continue and as you progress, we can't wait to hear which field of specialization you choose or do not choose and also even with I like how you said that you'd you'd also like to pursue furthering uh your studies you know it was only recently that because of this podcast I actually learned that doctors study further than just really? being a doctor mm. yes I didn't know that personally I was like why the hell would you do it <laughs> I mean, did you not suffer enough? Uh, so it was only until and during the podcast. Let me not like yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, why would you do it in the first place? But I understand, and I've spoken to some really amazing people who pursue um, whose love for research or all of that stuff um, enables them to. St- 
study further. So um, I'm pretty excited to see what you do post being a doctor and uh, whatever field you do. So as we're wrapping up, thank you. You've you've really touched on so many amazing things you are you've been very open and honest with us about your journey um even though you are in the beginning but you're also in the middle of it um i just wanted to ask if somebody's listening and they're like whoa this girl is inspiring i wish to be like her or whatever um because you are inspiring i hope you realize that like you. you gave me you gave me goosebumps here sharing your story and just how you're not a victim of your circumstance so i wanted to say what final nuggets or words of wisdom would you love to leave us all with um, that you have learned so far in your own journey number one I would just say sometimes life will not give you what you want it will give you what you need as I mentioned earlier so as people we always want some things but then not ended up not paying attention to all these beautiful things that we have around us, which is something that we need. And as a result, you you don't really uh, appreciate all the wonderful things you have around you. So life will not give you what you want, but it will give you what you need. It's up to you whether you choose to embrace it or you cry and be like, oh, I didn't get that. I didn't get this. But at the end of the day, but they say if, if life gives you lemons, you need to learn to make lemonade. That, that's what they usually say. So life will not give you what you want. It's up to you mm. to use what you have to your own mm. advantage. And then number two, if you want to do something, sometimes you just need to step back, work on yourself first, discover what you want. Don't rate yourself uh, according to what the society expects of you. To what your family expect you to be, what your siblings want you to be. But have time for yourself, learn what you want, be sure of what you want before proceeding, and then learn what you want. Like don't like don't do the thing of planning things with people. Sometimes crowd will mislead you. Crowd will mislead you, I repeat. If you want to do something, do it. I'm not saying be selfish. I'm not. <laughs> but if you really want to do something, just learn to focus on yourself. And you must be mm-hmm. sure that this is something that you want. Because maybe you're in high school, you're listening to this, you in a group of friends, you guys are all saying, ah, we want to go study medicine. You know that group of friends, that five group of friends, and then you all together, you're saying, we want to go study medicine, you all apply at the same time, <laughs> medicine, first choice, medicine, first choice. At the end of the day, you need to sit down with yourself. Number one, will I be able to meet the minimum requirements for that? Number two, am I really going to be a compatible yeah. doctor? Am I really going to manage all these things that come with being a medical student? Because sometimes you may be good at science, but not good at school. So you just need to sit down with yourself and get to know what Mm. you really want outside of all the voices of your friends, your family, society, speaking in your head. Just focus on what you want and the journey will just shine. I completely um, agree with you um, with both of the two points that you've raised, especially the last one. I think... Sometimes we do things because of what other people expect us to do or what our friends are doing. And also this thing about just because you're good at science or good in maths and physics, whatever, doesn't necessarily mean that the only thing that you can be is being a doctor. Mm. There's so many things in science that you can do. Yeah, and you can just research and look into that. So definitely some really great advice. And I hope somebody takes heed of that advice and uh, somehow applies it to themselves and with that being said uh, it's been so lovely chatting with you and you sharing your amazing story your for you just being so open and honest I appreciate that more than you know and I'm sure everybody else who's listening appreciates that so thank you so much for coming on today and speaking with me thank you for having me it has been lovely chatting to you
that is a wrap everyone thank you so much for listening through to this particular episode and also thank you to my guests today as well as everybody in this past month i hope like myself you have been inspired and you it has may challenged you to pursue your dreams with that being said thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the rich of the sons podcast with your girl and with an e until next time goodbye